after several decades of many exhibitions, we've come up with a new, very different looking exhibition. Lucinda, Jimmy and Jay, they all start, I think, in the 90s, and they're all very individual, distinct um, artists and people now. And I thought very happily sitting in three tones, three, three layers of the exhibition. So having Jane at the other end, but she's been painting the, the patients, you come through meeting this history that she has created, and then you're brought into this absolute light and space, mountains and sea. As all of the artists are absolutely lovely people, we met up and we all got on well and so it really became easy to pull it together. The, the challenge was coming up with a title that would express what this exhibition is about. So. And the three of us got to meet and that was so wonderful being able to meet Jane, have Ahetas and myself talk uh, and show and have this lovely bond about three people from three different parts of, you know, life. And then there we were, and then lockdown happened. Three places in time, we're all in a place in time. Everybody in the world is in a place in a time right now, whether they're with the person they want to be or they were caught in mid-motion and stuck somewhere in another town. So suddenly everything was put on hold, changed, and we had to wait a lot longer than we expected to get the exhibition up on display. This is the right time and the right place for this exhibition. I've known Lucinda a number of years. I've seen her exhibitions and been to her Lucy Loud. I, I met Jimmy saw his work and I thought I could see some really lovely connections in the relationship between the artworks. Then I uh, by chance reacquainted myself with Jane Allison because I had originally worked here 30 years ago and I remembered her oil paintings and, and I thought oh I really must get this body of work back to St Pancras for which had not been here for quite a while. We had placed uh, Jane's work in the interior side of the gallery and with Jane I think it's a great opportunity to connect with a new audience because her work has mainly been on display at the Royal College of Nursing. We're, tr we're endeavouring to make reaches into the local community because the portraits from the 90s are a valuable piece of social history. There was a group of artists set in Camden called Five Women Artists Plus and every year they had an exhibition in St Pancras Old Church which is next door to the hospital. Mari had um, decided that she would take some of the um, patients at the hospital to see the art exhibition. And she came along to the private view, we were all sitting there with our glasses of wine, and Mari came up to me and she said, I've got a marvellous idea, I think you should paint our very, very oldest resident. Jane Claridge was 101 and she'd spent her entire life, working life, curling ostrich feathers for hats. And she, she was a lovely, but completely um, lucid, uh, wonderful woman. And Mari said, I think we need to celebrate her and paint her. This is Teresa. I have a feeling she may even have been a refugee from the war. And if you look in her eyes, you can see that kind of sadness. Yes. In a way. Her name was Teresa Kanker. But she thought it was quite a nice painting. But she, and she'd, she'd really dressed up for it. And you can see how beautifully dressed she is. And I think the, the, the notable thing about these paintings and the things that I enjoyed so much about it was, was the painting of the hands, that their hands were so sort of expressive in some ways, you know, they, they, and the way they held, held them and the way that the skin is almost transparent. They paid for the materials and the framing and I was there probably from about 1986 until the early 90s. 
I noticed your paintings are mainly about women, but there are some men. What, what There's was one the... or two men, but of mm. course, actually, that generation of men didn't really survive to this oh. point. I think there's only one man okay. I've painted called Mr John Owen. The uh, second part with Ahita's work is in the gallery walkway with some natural light and unfortunately he's not been able to return to London during the pandemic which makes the display of the work for me quite poignant because it reflects another country, another place, a dual life between London and, um, and Greece. What's it all doing? There we are. Because I am up at the, at the mountain and that's where I paint now. And there's nothing there. Just me and the cats. <laughs> if I want to communicate, then I have to get on my motorbike and go down the village to come over to Poros. So it's being quite recluse, really. That's the house. This is one of the paintings. I have done big paintings, but the same style as the long one in the exhibition. Yeah. And and then I have I did a series of boats at night in Poros. As you walk up across the promenade, you can see these boats. So then, when I did get finally, when we got the go ahead to come back in, and I sat with Peter and Marius, I said, "Well, these were the ones I remember you liked." And um, so it's incredible because it's, I think it's 36 pictures actually. It's, and they're different sizes and oh, the colours are stupendous. So for me it was really exciting. It's everything that I touch stimulates my own imagination and then comes back into my own work. Lucy is very familiar with my paintings anyway because I've been hanging on the walls in the house uh, on and off. It's a pity I cannot be there to, uh, because of the situation as it is now, worldwide. Uh, but uh, I, I hope maybe I, I should be able to come over next month. Well, I miss you very much, and so doing this exhibition for me is is really quite, uh, quite, it's quite hard to describe. It really is, it's, it's my heartstrings are aching. <laughs> so a seed was planted in my head that I'd really like an exhibition of my life. What am I, who am I now? And I thought the way I can do that is if I surround myself by myself with everything I've done, tell a story and it all comes out at the end with Harriet, because it's led to Harriet. I, I didn't see Lucinda's display as being exactly a, a retrospective. I thought she's a, a, a vibrant, interesting person, artist. Let's challenge her to turn it in more into an installation. And she really has put everything into this, so it's not just a retrospective. I will always say I'm a singer, songwriter, but I'm also, as time has grown these past years, I now, well, I also say I'm a creative artist, fully creative artist, multidimensional, because really I think of all the details and I like to <laughs> control the setting. I mean, I know exactly what I want. It's fresh, it's interesting, and she's crowned it all with a, a, a selfie frame idea that involves interaction with the visitors to the gallery. And I love frames because I love the fact that you've got a window that somebody can tell their story from. So to have one of these hanging, I'm going to make a much bigger one, so that people, the public, can go behind it and I'd like them to do a selfie and, and say what's their story. So if you look at the beginnings of it, with where it is at the moment and where it will end at the end, you'll see a growing piece of artwork.
But for me, it was a very interesting thing to do because um, I could paint the portraits I wanted to paint rather than painting for a, a client. And so you could paint portraits like this one where you might have a, a person who is looking um, completely uh, sideways. Whereas if you're painting for money, uh, you want to paint people at their best, looking their best, and generally speaking, looking towards you. And it was part of the ethos of the place at the time that people should continue to have experiences, um, even though they were, were stuck in a, 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 hosp a hospital for geriatric long stay, really, where they could have just been left to vegetate. The person in charge was determined they were going to continue to have stimulating experiences. Um, one of these was obviously the regular bingo parties and um, the garden parties. And part of it was also this, the experience of being painted, um, which she felt was a unique experience. I think it was a very extraordinary place. And, you know, it was made by a series of very extraordinary people who actually really did care. Some of the people living here actually made friends. And so that painting was about a friendship that these two ladies formed whilst living at St Pancras, which is a very rare thing. You very rarely get that in nursing homes. And the, and the budgie, they had a budgie because um, the lady who ran the place felt it was their home and it was all part of making it a home. The painting behind Jimmy's head was by his father. It's of a moonscape. My father used to paint, so we, when we were growing up, we, we just used to go and mess up with his colours. He used to <laughs> get very annoyed. It's been near somebody who paints. Also, my cousin's uh, father, David Page, used to come to Greece and paint and draw. And, and when I was when I was very young, there was a, a French painter and. He stayed at my grandmother's for a while. That time in Greece, people used to invite people into their homes and not charge them anything. It was uh, hospitality. So he said, he said, what do you want? And my grandmother said, well, you could teach him painting. And she said, well, I'll, I'll try and see. You don't paint from outside. It all comes from your head. As you know, that's when long time looking at things and observing and seeing small changes because the paintings are not being planned as saying i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna do a landscape or i'm gonna do that uh, it kind of evolves with the colors I, I paint and suddenly I realize, oh, there's, there's something in there from that kind of myth or that kind of story. Or, but that, that, that is not intentional. I, I, I think the visual aspect is, is present in the music also. Because I don't write songs, I write pieces of music. And most of the time there are soundscapes like a landscape a soundscape when i come to poros i stay for a couple of days and i do a bit of music i've got my hammond here because the challenge of painting a group is far greater than painting an individual 
in that you've got tremendous problems with making the perspective work. So, you know, there's got to be a kind of, a cir like a circular vision. And there's almost a conversation going on that you've got these very, very old people who've been through the war, most of them, and then you've got this little tiny boy who probably wouldn't have been there if they hadn't been through the war in quite that way. And again, this is quite interesting in that you've got the carers joining in with the, with the, pe the residents. And you can see the same nurse here as in there. But I also like things like these were real national health um, cups. That's what we've had. But unusually for a National Health Hospital, you'll notice the, the daffodils, which immediately brighten the place and make it um, human in some way. I worked there for almost 30 years. Mm -hmm. I was the medical records manager in South Wing. I was fully aware of of Mari, the social life on the wards. I, I was very, uh, very fascinated by your tale of the portrait that got to the National Portrait Gallery. Yeah. I remember <laughs> the patients were taken to, to view it. Yes, so, I still yeah. can't remember. I think she took them on the underground. There's four cabinets, so one cabinet's going to be dedicated to the alternative work, Miss World. I was in it three times. And This one was water, actually. You know, this was the first one. This was 1984. And it was f fantastic fun. So I went as Miss Continental Cartoon, which was the name of my band at the time. And then from 1985, the theme was Earth. And in 1991, I became runner-up. I was Miss What on Earth. And it was at the Brixton Academy. And that was a year I had 40 miles, which is a way to number one in the dance tour. Second cabinet will be music. Third cabinet will be my design, because I've been in magazines designing interiors. And then the final cabinet will be dedicated to Harriet in lockdown, the drawings I've been doing. And then the, I'd like to put in a couple of pictures from Lucy's Lounge because currently it's Harriet and Lucy's Lounge. So, so being playful has been like, so lucky because there's more ideas. Londoners and they represent other parts of London to me. This is a study for a portrait I painted, this one. It's the Archbishop of in Great Britain, the Theatera, head of the Greek Orthodox Church in Britain, who unfortunately died last year. And I used to come up here and see him and quite often go to services where he was presiding and there'd be an awful lot of the local community of, of the Camden area in the church. And then um, at the end is Baroness Howells, who um, is a, she came from Grenada, or Grenada. Uh, she's um, in the House of Lords. And again, a wonderful woman and a wonderful face. And then we have John and Robert. Um, now, John, my husband, and Robert, both born Londoners. Um, Robert's uh, family were Jewish, and um, actually, um, I think my husband's part, part, part Jewish as well and they've been great friends for years. And I like the juxtaposition of the painted shirt and the painted body, and them sitting on the sofa with my very old dog, now sadly deceased, and they are both Londoners, but they have both left London, because both of them feel that London is no longer the place they knew and loved. The eccentrics have gone, the funny little shops, the, the funny little bars and cafes and all that sort of thing, they've all disappeared. So there we are. So it feels like we're on a vault. We've got the lights on the deck. And I'm going to... I want to have fairy lights in the cabinets, or a light the cabinets in such a way. Makes it nice and relaxing and necessary. Imagine a singer wearing a mask. That is hilarious. You know, the singer who went on a tour. I mean, because singers can't go out and play in public now. You know, as all the artists, creators. So I just thought it's it's light and dark. And if you, with the lockdown, there's been so much sadness, enormous sadness. I like to create fun, and because I'm not out singing physically, and I'm not able to do Lucy's Lounge physically, 
um, I thought, well, what I can do is I can draw. And this heart symbolises another door, another chapter. What's, what's behind the door, I don't know. What I probably will do is, in some of the books, I cut. I cut the page and then I'll write the date. So at the moment I'm looking forward to the exhibition, so we're going to be putting the pictures up, but the exhibition is going to be coming up. So I will put a little, you know, where we're coming through, and that's on the 2nd of October. So the 2nd of October is a lovely date. So I'm going to be presenting pictures of Harriet wearing her mask, you know, from day one to day, you know, I mean, it's unbelievable. I thought it was going to be three weeks. Every day I was posting Harriet on, I thought, well, this is the time, I may as well, Instagram and Facebook. And then I got people following, wanting to know what Harriet thought. And I would like Harriet to become everybody's best friend, companion. So you'd never be alone, you'd have the, you can pat, you know when you pat your own shoulder and say, well done? Well, I was just thinking, wouldn't it be nice? And then I looked and I could just think, because Harriet's like that for me. She is me, but she's always been called Harriet because... Um, you know the old black and white American detectives, I think Humphrey Bogart and Harry, Harry walked into a room. It was late night in a bar. There was smoke. It was dark. She's actually a brick. That's why she's orange. And I thought, well, what is a brick? A brick is an old way of English saying, oh, she's a, he's a brick. So there, a brick is somebody you can rely on. I have exhibited her before, but not to the level that she is appearing in photographs with her. <laughs> you know what she's doing so much. It, for me, it's an exhibition about colour, and we've got Jane's still life landscapes, which are like four seasons of from the grey, brown, bleak of autumn, winter, through to the splendours of spring and summer. I paint. I like painting, it's all I really like to do. Almost as a sort of antidote to painting portraits. P painting portraits is hard work. You're, you're very sort of poised to try and get that essential essence of somebody. And so these are much more, or I think of them almost as little poems. And I paint them on these little canvases because they're small enough to take out into the countryside. Um, and so all these little portraits are done around more or less where I live. I've lived in Surrey most of my life, really, and I feel it's ingrained in me. Um, and so all these are, are like little homages to Surrey. And occasionally, though, I'll paint something a bit bigger. And that might be just like a vehicle for the paint. Like if I wanted, I wanted to paint a picture about autumn and I wanted to use certain colours and build up certain textures. Sometimes with these paintings, I will build them up to a bigger painting. And the other thing I like to paint are flowers. The flowers I paint are grown in my garden. And I just go and pick them and, and put them in pots that I buy from the local Oxfam shop. For me, they're kind of a diary. Beyond the gamut of colour of Jane, we then move into the connections between Ahitas and Lucinda, which uh, it seems to me to involve the colour blue, maybe yellow, the yellow of the sun, the blue of the ocean. It's being able to create out of thin air a space or an environment just with a few elements and the elements are the colour of the paint that was chosen for the panels is very much a Greek taverna colour. Maria said, what's the central picture? And I thought, it's got to be the Fortinese Alley Key Taverna, because that's where I go and meet Jimmy. We go and sit there, we go swimming. That's where we meet friends. And it's really peaceful. And the people that live around there are so natural. They, are, they don't work in cities. They live off building work, bits and jobs. And they just swim every day, walk their dog, live a very simple life. And it's wonderful because it's so, there's such a strong connection to the elements. Can you believe it from Hellenic Television in three places and time? It's wonderful to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's it's so beautiful here. I'm so excited. It's a great experience. Thank you. So here I am looking to introduce this Greek art to a Greek community. The Scottish and the Greek. As a storyteller and how I describe my feelings is through my drawings and songs. Mm. 
so I was feeling very heavy and I felt like a lump of lead. But Harriet appeared to say, this is how I'm feeling. And that was in 1988. It's so romantic and so different from nowadays because nowadays it's taxi. Yes. This is a proper yes. letter, love letter. Yes. <laughs> and there's me, this is me taking it to the post office. I'm heading out the door. So I thought, why don't I, once upon a time, singer meets musician. So two musicians meet. And we're in the same corridor all these years later, facing each other, but one's in Greece and one's here. Oh. So I thought, so many people will understand that because so many people are separated by this COVID. This is where we always go. There's the little pier. Mm -hmm. So you would walk from here out. This would have tables and chairs. Then you'd be out going to the sea. I think the gallery has been blessed over the years because I think we are one of the few specialist galleries in London that actually remained open and still is open during the pandemic. So we're bringing quite a lot of joy to NHS workers. I just thought oh, this would be a great way to have people coming through the, the corridor in, in the hospital conference centre. I thought that'd be so much fun because it's the interaction brings life and brings life and brings joy. I want this to make people feel good in such a heavy, hard time. If lockdown would have let us, we'd have a proper opening so I could do a show. But it doesn't matter, we'll find a way.